Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to break down how you can create content effectively, producing, scheduling it, and not feeling overwhelmed. I think it's a challenge that a lot of us have in our lives today. Instead of staring at my mug all day, I actually have a little presentation for you guys. So this is me. Nope, that's not me. That's actually Grand Bend, Ontario, the beautiful beach in Grand Bend. So let me just share this with you. That's me. So it's 5.30 in the morning in little old southwestern Ontario, Canada. I'm in my basement studio, but what you're looking at right now is a photo of me in my actual studio at the office. My name's Justin Conoco. I own a real estate brokerage, a production company, and a agency. Think of it like McDonald's. I created the production company and the agency to serve the purposes of the real estate brokerage. The really cool thing about it now is I found a space where all of these other businesses need the same principles that we use in real estate applied in their business. They need to figure out how to create content to brand themselves, to attract the right clients or friends in their world. And then they need to be able to do it effectively over time. The issue that I found in the industry is every time you'd go to a video production company or a social media agency to hire them, the bills that they would charge you are astronomical. They would charge you $5,000 for a shoot session to produce some content or maybe a little scissor reel commercial or the agency would charge you a $1,500 or $3,000 management fee to run a $200 Facebook ad. So what we try and do on this channel and with those businesses is not necessarily just get a whole bunch of customers and, and build out a client base the way that a typical agency or production company would. We actually go in and try and teach people how to do it themselves. I would way rather teach you how to fish and then go out and get a whole bunch of new ideas and then bring them back to you then just try and create the content and distribute it for you. Um, so the first hack about content creation is if you can learn the skill set, you are infinitely more powerful than if you're just hiring somebody to do it for you. So who am I? I'm, like I said, I own a real estate brokerage. But more than that, the way that I built my business was by putting about a thousand short form videos out in the world. So initially, I didn't own a brokerage. I was just an agent at a brokerage trying to figure it out. To go back to the beginning of my story, my wife and I got in the industry in a little bit of a roundabout way. Um, I was actually in hospitality. So I worked for a gentleman named Mike Smith. Um, I ran multiple restaurants, did every job. I was a DJ. I was a bouncer. I was a bar back. I was a manager. I was a supervisor. And then I did marketing coordination for the company. So I was in charge of implementing marketing to really get places that maybe weren't producing as much as they should up in the public eye. And I remember one place, Pizza Pie, for example, um, we had a really hard time getting people into the restaurant. We did things like literally figure out that the train would come every day at 5 p.m., cook a whole bunch of pizzas, get some $5 off coupons and run up and down the street handing out free pizza, really belly to belly with consumers trying to figure out, you know, how do I get attention on the brands that I know are valuable? This is what I'm going to teach you all today is I'm sure you have value, but we need to extrapolate it to the public to generate those relationships that are really going to make a difference for you. Going back to the story though, when we got into the real estate business, my wife and I actually had a little tongue in cheek name for our team and it was the closers. We were in business for about six months. We had a couple listings, not a single sale, very difficult time in the marketplace. It was about 2012. So much so that I think I joked with her and said, I really hope nobody takes a little bit of spray paint and like spray paints out the C on our sign. And then we're called the losers. Um, because I just felt deflated, right? Really had a hard time. And the reason why was in the industry, typically what they do is tell you, well, oh, just go on your Facebook and call everybody you know in real estate and ask them if they know anybody looking to buy or sell a house. You need to tell them that you're in real estate so they can call their friends. Well, the reality of it was when I did that, most of my friends made fun of me. Not many of them actually were responsive to that type of script because they're like, Justin, that's not you. That's not your personality. Like, what are you doing here? So I made a switch. And again, this is 2012, 2013. Instead, what I did was I started documenting my journey and the thousand videos that I put out. I'll show you some, some comparisons of them um, later on in this presentation weren't good but they were authentic. They were me going through the process. I started thinking about my city and what I was doing and how I could help people. And really my ambition early, early on was just to get a couple sales under my belt. Now we got that traction fairly quickly and then it was, okay, well now I want to become higher profile in my city and become known as like one of the main agents. So my strategy adapted and then became that. And then my profile became, well, let, we want to open a company that does real estate, not just be another brand. 
so on and so forth. And that's how we got to where we are today. 90% plus of my clients came from organic content creation. I'm going to show you the entire strategy. Now, there's three types of content. And the first thing I'm going to ask all of you who are on the YouTube channel, wow, there's a lot of you here. Oh my gosh, okay. I'll get to the comments in a little bit. If you have any questions, you can drop them in there and I'll address them later. But what I want to ask you all is, there's three types of content, images, words, and video. Actually, let's add a fourth, social audio. So if you had to ask yourself, do I like taking pictures? Do I like writing? Do I like creating video? Or do I like spending time on social audio? Please drop it in the chat on YouTube and let me know which one of those things you prefer. Because the very first thing I'm going to teach you about creating content is pick one. Pick one pillar of content. Let's use me as an example right now on YouTube. This could be considered a pillar of content. I am shooting a video explaining how to come up with ideas, how to shoot them, and then how to distribute them. But I can download this file when I'm done. I can go to an app like otter.ai. I can drop that file in otter.ai and I can export it as an SRT file, which is closed captions, a text file, which is written word or an audio file, which I can then drop into an app called Buzzsprout. And I can distribute that as a podcast in like five different places. So pick a pillar of content that you're comfortable with. If you think you're not good on video, I'll address that later. I promise you, I wasn't good on video in the beginning either, but you have to pick one to start. Like I said, though, maybe it's images. I have seen some of the most incredible Instagram profiles off people on Clubhouse. And I mean, some of the most curated visuals that really make me feel something, right? So I want you to get inspired. Amanda, you are good at video. Valerie, you are words and images. IYH, writing and audio. I love it. I love all these responses. Kate, you are very good at video. I will tell you that as well. Kate, I would also tell you, I think written word is good for you as well. Anybody that doesn't know Kate Volman, her um, email newsletter is one of the best. I read it all the time too. And I think she's awesome at it. So I would say pick images, words or video, but then think about it again. Go back to the question. Why does it matter? It's going to attract the right people, right? There's two types of marketing you can do. There's outbound, which is Facebook, maybe lead ads, which I do a lot of paid digital, but I can tell you the attraction marketing is very, very different, right? The types of clients that come off my YouTube channel for prime brokerage. This is my main, this is my personal channel, Justin Conoco. But if you go to prime real estate brokerage, there's over 2,100 subscribers. My phone rings 19 to 30 times a month off that channel from people that are already sold on working with me. They don't try to discount my commission. I don't even have to sell them on me. They feel like they know me because I've attracted that type of clientele, right? So that's why it's important because the attraction clientele will filter out the right people. And as you can tell, it's 530 in the morning and I've got insanely high energy. So I'm a lot for a lot of people. It also filters out the people that I shouldn't be working with, which to me may be even more valuable than attracting the right people. One other thing I want to point out though here, print, radio, TV, or organic. All content is content to the point of me walking into a coffee shop with somebody and having a conversation with them. That is content. How? Well, if I walk into a coffee shop in a town that I've never been in and I'm going to move my real estate brokerage into that market and I want to start doing sales, who do you think has a direct line into a lot of the most influential people in that market? Probably the barista that runs the local coffee shop. And if I walk in there and I have a, and if I have a conversation, sorry, there's a hot mic that's a little bit distracting. If I walk into that coffee shop and I have a conversation with that person about who I am, what I do, and where I do it, it's going to give them some baseline that as I come in consistently, they're going to be like, oh, there's Justin again. That's what he does. There's Justin again. That's what he does. Now, when you're speaking to people from a content creation perspective, think about it like walking into a high school cafeteria nobody is going to like the guy that walks into the room and everybody's having their own conversations at their own tables. And I walk in and go, Hey, I'm Justin. I sell properties in Southwestern Ontario, Canada. I create awesome content with my media company. They're, they're going to look at me like cool story, bro. Pat yourself on the back. Like we're good. We're having our conversations over there. So when it comes to organic content, something you have to be very thoughtful is building relationships before you start asking or even telling them who you are. You want to walk into those spaces and be belly to belly with them and figure out the problems that those people have and how you can solve them. But I digress. Going back to print, radio, TV, and organic, let's go back to the 1950s. 
Radio was the number one medium for advertising. All of the Fortune 500 companies lived on radio. If you go back to our grandparents' day and you ask them, they're going to tell you. They would sit around. They would listen to the radio. Same shows every week. Kind of like Clubhouse. Now, then it went to color TV. Did you know that in the 50s, 90% of the Fortune 500 list lost market share because they thought the color TV was a fad? Fast forward to the internet. Remember when the internet came around? Not everybody does because we're not all the same age. But when the internet came around, it was a fad. So was buying stuff online. So was opening a Facebook account. So was opening an Instagram account. So was opening a TikTok account. And guess what? People are feeling the same way about cryptos, NFTs, and Web 3.0. If you're not noticing the pattern, you are missing out because every time there is a shift, there is a massive opportunity. If you were one of the people who would have been able to go into color TV, before everybody else did, you would have done it at a way less cost. Same thing as Google. When SEO became prevalent, if I wanted to buy, you know, the ad word real estate in Canada, it would have been infinitely cheaper in the early 2000s than it is today. Now, my organic and digital strategy actually has as much, if not a bigger impact than some of the largest national brands in Canada because I'm just doing it in a space where they don't exist yet. So there is a great opportunity from a content creation perspective. Now let's dig into it. How to come up with the actual ideas. This is where I'd say 90% of people get stuck is they say, I would need to create content. probably, I don't know, flash your mics. If you ever feel this, you're like, okay, I'm going to do it today at two o'clock, two o'clock comes around. You're like, I don't know what to post flash your mic. If you've ever told yourself, I don't know what to post. Cause we all feel like that sometimes. The first super hack I'm going to give you is you need to compartmentalize these different tasks. So idea creation should sit in one day on your calendar. Shooting should sit in one day on your calendar. And then editing and distribution should also sit on one day in your calendar separately. Because if you try to come up with an idea in one session, you try and shoot it in that same session, and then you try and edit and distribute it in that same session, you're never going to succeed You're going to sit there, you're going to feel deflated and defeated, and you're just not going to be able to execute. And then guess what? You're going to give up. And then maybe you're going to execute next week and feel really good about it, but then you're not going to lift a finger or press a cord for six more weeks until you get to that cycle, that feeling. So let's break that self-defeating narrative and let's give you a couple tools on how you can do it. So three questions to ask yourself. Anytime you need to create content on the fly, where are you? What are you doing and how are you doing it? I could literally grab my phone right now, which I will do, and I can go on Instagram and I can press my little stories button. And anybody that wants to do this and tag me in it, do it right now. I would absolutely love to see and meet a whole bunch of you. So you can tag me at justin.conico and I can literally turn my camera on my screen and go, ah, and I can snap a photo. And if I really had time, what I would do is I would go in and I would tag BWC and Sarah McCord and Glenn Lundy and Kate Volman and Amanda Dahl and Kim F and Walter Davis and everybody else that I'm seeing. Hey, what's up, Armando? Social with Rocky. I would tag all of you in this post right now once they focused on the video. And that would automatically create a whole bunch of engagement and connections. Talk about attracting the right people. I've talked to Rocky on the background and told her how my really good friend, Glenda Baker, loved the room that she hosted a month and a half ago. And I'm trying to create a connection there and make sure that they know each other a little bit better, right? I just created a piece of content. Where am I? I'm in my basement studio. What am I doing? I'm doing a live video on YouTube teaching you how to do content creation and how am I doing it? I could do another post kind of explaining the process or I can give you an entire slide deck on content creation. So those three questions. Write these down. Where are you? What are you doing? And how are you doing it? Think about it. If you're sitting down with lunch with Sarah McCord and you're in New York City at one of the coolest restaurants because she knows all the spots and you take a photo of you with Sarah eating food, tell me that's not an engaging piece of content. Smiling people and friends on feeds actually track better than almost any other piece of content. I guarantee you it will blow up and it's you having lunch with Sarah in New York City just hanging out. After you're done the meeting, you grab your stories or your Instagram, you go to stories, press the button. I just had a meeting with Sarah McCord. She's building one of the most amazing breakfast shows on the planet. You need to check her out. We talked about this, this, this. Have a great day. You then explain why you were doing it. So now you've got two or three pieces of content out of the same couple minutes that you spent with Sarah. And here's the crux of it. The reason I like creating content is what I said earlier. It attracts the right people and really anchors friendships. 
right? So you're doing it in an authentic way with the right people. That engagement is going to attract more people like Sarah is probably going to keep you top of mind with Sarah and just build that friendship as well too. So you can use content creation strategically to intermingle your friendship and your work environment and create a better world. As I'm doing this presentation, I am also on Clubhouse. There's 250 people in this room right now. 750 people have been through it. There's going to be thousands of people that listen to the replay. All of these people right now, a whole bunch of them are live. If you actually are on Clubhouse, you can scroll to the top. You can click the link. Join us on YouTube. And if you actually want this entire slide deck, go to justinconico.com slash resources. Let me go back to the slide here at the bottom. Uh, actually, sorry, let me go back to the... Yeah, it's at the end. I'll give it to you at the end as well. Um, and I can send you the slide deck there. The reason I just did that is another piece of what we're going to talk about in a little bit. I'm using content to create relationships. I just told everybody that they could come join us on YouTube. And I also sent them somewhere where I can send them the slide deck and then maintain and build the relationship. Third part. Now we got to structure the video. So we've discussed how to come up with ideas, how to compartmentalize it. But the structure of a video is still tied into idea creation. And because I've been in the back channels with some massive YouTubers, I'm going to share a couple of secrets with you that they taught me. Did you know that some of the biggest YouTubers on the planet base their videos or create their videos off their thumbnails first? So they actually think of the thumbnail before they even think of the idea. And they reverse engineer the idea from the thumbnail. The reason is, as I said earlier, the things that I learned as far as growing my channel, click-through rates, number one, and a good click-through rate on YouTube is like 2%. Our, my click-through rates are like 5 to 9%, not because I'm awesome, just because I implement some of the things these guys have taught me. And then retention. So getting people to your videos and then keeping them on your videos is absolutely key. And that starts with engaging topics. So instead of me saying, well, today I'm going to talk about how amazing Justin is and I'm just going to show you all of Justin's story, Instead, I said, okay, well, maybe you're somebody that has a business and is struggling to create content. You're feeling overwhelmed, which again, is a feeling a lot of us feel. How can we solve that problem? Well, I can show you how to create ideas. I can show you how to structure a video, shoot it and distribute it. I'm solving a problem for you. So all of your topics should be evolved or revolve around this framework. What's the problem? Why does it matter? Who will it help? And how are we going to fix it? Every piece of content that I create, especially my long form content is based around these principles because it gives me the framework of what you're here for. Remember what I said in the beginning, 1.8 seconds is all you have to get people's attention in today's day and age. The key thing is, and we'll get to this in a second, delivering on that effectively, but thinking of the audience first, go back to the coffee shop. I walk into a coffee shop in a market I've never done business in. If I just drop off a real estate card and you're the barista, you're going to think, well, there's another greasy salesman. Awesome. He's going to try and sell me something. Versus if I come in there and buy a coffee every day for a month and I'm asking you questions and I find out you're going to university and maybe you're in film, maybe you're a drone pilot, you love nature and hikes and, and all these things too. And then the next time I come in and I tell you about a recent trip I took to Algonquin National Park and a place that I saw a moose and that you know I love taking photos and videos and then I send you a link to an aerial drone video I did of Algonquin or your area. Now we're developing a relationship and then I find out that you know you're going through school but you're really struggling with creating your online personal brand at the same time. Now I can point you to this video and then now we've got a deeper relationship. So then you find out that I'm a real estate agent and I happen to own a brokerage and we kill it in the real estate space and you happen to be buying a house. Who are you more likely to buy a house from? The guy that just walked into the coffee shop dropped off a card and then walked out or the person that you've developed a relationship with. So think about people's questions, right? What questions are they needing answers to in your space? Why does it matter? You want to go back to who is it going to help? So you know exactly who you're talking to when you press record. And then how are you actually going to fix it? And when I go back to the, who will it help? I see Janice popped in the chat. I see Val. I saw Dakota earlier. I'm literally thinking of you when I'm making these videos. Like, I feel like I'm talking to you. I don't care who you are and where you are on the planet. I want you to know that I feel like I'm talking to a human being right now, which didn't come overnight. It felt really weird. I'm staring at a lens. Now I'm thinking about it and I feel kind of weird. But 
when I realize that there are other people at the end of this and I'm getting messages and DMs and phone calls and building relationships, I go back to my why, right? I'm solving problems for people. Now, let's talk about the structure of a video. You've made time to create your ideas. You have an idea of who you're speaking to and some of the problems they have. This is where it gets a little bit more detailed in terms of the structure of a video. Um, I'll probably do another session on Breakfast with Champions on my video planner, and I'll share that sheet with you guys in terms of like literally the spreadsheet that I use to go from my thumbnail to my title to my idea to my description to my tags. We will do that on this session. Not today because there's not going to be enough time. Um, but the hook is what I said in the beginning, right? So if I go back to today's video, for example... My problem that I'm trying to solve is how to create content without feeling overwhelmed. My hook would be in the first 1.8 seconds, which I think I did at the beginning of this video. Today, I'm going to teach you how to come up with ideas, shoot the content, and then schedule it so you do not feel overwhelmed. So if you don't know me and you just came to this channel, I'm being very concise about what you're going to get today. Then I'm going to deliver on my promise. I'm typically going to jump right into the content. This is where a lot of people miss. And I did it for years. So learn from my mistake is I would roll like a one minute intro video of me with Ryan Serhan doing podcasts and doing videos. And I'm like, yeah, this is like, you know, proof of authority and people will want to come to my stuff. And guess what? When I got around those YouTubers and started learning about the software, they're like, go look at your retention. And I would look at those videos and I would see people come in and watch the videos right when I did that hook part and then drop off massively whenever I rolled the intro clip because they're not there for me. They're there for the answer to the question. So deliver on the promise. Now, once you've delivered and they see that you actually have a bit of a base or you're able to solve the problem for them, you're throughout the video going to be giving them leads into what's coming down the pipeline because maybe you're watching the live stream right now and you really want to talk about a scheduling plan for video but I'm not going to get to that to the end and you bounce out right now. Well, you're going to miss that segment. But if I tell you that we're going to get to it or breaking myths about content creation at the end of this video, well, maybe now you stick around for it, right? So I'm delivering on the promise. I'm kind of leaving you want more, which is that portion there. And the CTA is, is the industry term for call to action. And I'm one of those guys that I don't sell any courses. I don't do any coaching. I just I do this because it's genuinely fun and it makes me better. I really believe in the marketplace of ideas and doing this now and doing this in a year, you're going to get a very different version of Justin next year, but I will do a call to action because I want to build relationships. As I said, there's now 839 people that have been through breakfast with champions. There's over 250 people in the room. If I want to connect with you and I just shoot this video and bounce out, we don't go anywhere from here. You met me once. Maybe you never come in at five 30 again, which I hope you do, but I need to do something to make sure that we develop a relationship. So that's where a call to action of telling you, hey, you can go to justinconico.com slash resources. You can click on my profile on Clubhouse, go to my Instagram, send me a DM or go to my resources page and connect with me there. Now we're in each other's ecosystem. And that's a call to action. I like being very transparent about my call to actions. I tell people what they're going to get, why they're going to get it. And I'm happy if people unsubscribe from my mailing list as well, too, because every unsubscribe is dialing in my audience just like my content. I spoke earlier a little bit about metrics on YouTube. I can tell you, I know this channel is going to 100,000 plus. I know it's going to be at a million plus one day, not because I'm fancy, but because I will be committed and I will be here in the long run in the metrics. But I'm going to have to probably go through four or five years of grit for Google to be able to figure out from the algorithm who needs to see this content. And I'm committed to the process. I don't want to say four or five years, it might freak some people out, but the reality of it, if you look at the Mr. Beasts of the world and a lot of the people whose channels that really grew, the future is another example. It really took one video that popped for that channel to explode. I'm not going to get into that today. I'll do that in another session. Let's get into how to execute. So equipment paralyzes so many people. Hey, Justin, you have a really fancy camera and it looks super slick. Yeah. 10 years later, my phone is all I needed in the beginning. And the three things you need to know about gear the lighting and the camera do not matter. Audio first. Let's go back to YouTube. If you need to figure out how to change the oil on your Ford and you go on YouTube and you listen to a video and the audio just doesn't work, are you going to listen to the video? Probably not. But if the audio is amazing, the lighting isn't great, and the camera's kind of wonky, you're probably still going to get the information you need. 
audio first. So clear and concise audio. There's tons of options for mobile phones. I would not recommend AirPods. I would actually recommend the old school wired headphones. These are amazing. If you have a set of these and a phone or an iPhone, go for it. Or buy a set of these. These came from chapters. They're in super rough shape, but they work incredibly well. Then lighting. So I have a little Godox lighting box that is lighting me up right now. You can see the little lighting behind me as well. These are just little like after effects you can do. You can do them very cost effectively as well. Again, if you want to send me a DM, I can send you some links for that. And then just th gear. Think about how you're actually going to set up the shot, right? I would argue in today's day and age, mobile is even better than fancy DSLRs. So some of our YouTube videos, our neighborhood tours, we are going to using GoPros and iPhones versus DSLRs and gimbals. We have thousands of dollars of gear at the production company, but I'm looking at the data and the data on YouTube says the people that are looking to relocate and are watching neighborhood tour videos, they don't want to watch Avatar or a like Super Bowl commercial. They want to watch a real human being that knows a lot about the marketplace, taking them through those marketplaces, and they actually want the shaky cam. So don't spend a whole bunch of money on gear you will never use. Use what you have until it doesn't satisfy you anymore, and then you can grow. Now, the key thoughts for three things you need to think about and write these down or get the slide deck, keep it simple, press record, and nobody cares as much as you think they do. So simplicity means don't overthink every piece of content creation. Again, you're not creating a Super Bowl commercial or you're not creating Avatar, maybe yet. And, you know, once you start pressing record consistently, that's where you get better and better. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. The last one is nobody cares. Everybody gets paralyzed. My hair is not perfect. I look like this. They're going to think this, that, or the other about me. Trust me, I have the data. More people are concerned with how their own hair looks or their own content or their own feed than they are about yours. The thing about content creation today is you live in these feeds for such a glimmer of time that they're rarely looking as closely at you as you are at yourself. No different than your house. I'm in real estate. Everybody knows every nook and cranny of their house because they spend a lot of time in it. But when buyers come into your house, it usually takes three trips before they start noticing these little things here and there. So just understand that people are coming to you for a reason, but they're not really getting stuck in the minutia like you are. Here's the steps of creating, shooting, and posting. So first, you got to time block it, right? Time block your idea time, time block your shooting day, and then time block your editing and distribution day. Ideas should only take you 30 minutes. Grab a coffee. I like Saturday mornings before my wife and daughter are up. I'll typically go for a walk around the block. I'll hop on my bike. Um, I use my earphones to document ideas. So I use Siri and I'll say, add reminder, this idea in 30 minutes. And then when I get home, I'll take all those ideas and put them on a list. But all I do on Saturdays is ideas. I don't press record. I don't shoot. I don't do anything else. Now take yourself on that journey with me. How chill do I feel? If all I got to worry about is coming up with ideas, I can bang out 10, 20, 30 ideas on a Saturday. And I've got more ideas now than I could possibly ever shoot. Sometimes my 30 minute session will be me sitting on YouTube. And why don't I do this super quick? Because this is an interactive segment. And I'll give you an example of how to do it. And I do this for people on Breakfast with Champions all the time. They'll message me and say, Justin, I feel paralyzed about creating content. Uh, let me go here. So if I wanted to say I was a mortgage agent, I'm not a mortgage agent, but or a lawyer. Here we go. Lawyer reacts. I would literally look at the top lawyer videos. Legal Eagle is probably the number one lawyer channel on YouTube right now. And if I need ideas and I'm getting stuck in the idea creation process, why would I reinvent the wheel? Why wouldn't I just go to his videos, sort by his most popular and a real lawyer reacts to suits, which is a TV show. And he's got a lot of react videos that are doing very, very well. Lawyer responds. These are all responding, reacting videos. There aren't laws. So I, what I would do then is I'd go into his video and I'd look at the structure and the content of his videos and base my own ideas off of that. But I'll go back to the presentation for now. Then you set up your shot and your shoot day. Um, your shoot day can be pretty repeatable um, or I'd recommend to keep it as simple as possible. So audio, lighting, camera in that order. If you can set it up in a locked off place where all you have to do is come in, press record and leave, then you're going to be a lot more effective. And then on shoot day, shoot a lot of video, do a lot of takes. I do sometimes for one video, I'll do seven or eight takes just so I can kind of feel what I look like and then watch that footage after and make adjustments from there. Cool thing about digital is it's not a film. Like you don't have to put out every single piece of content. And I scrap a lot of my content 
but just putting in the reps makes you quite a bit better. And then editing, posting, and reviewing. I could do another session on this another day, but setting time to sit down and go through editing your content. And I don't even edit these videos. They're live and they just go out there. But I'll set a day a week to go through and maybe trim this up a little bit, maybe add some image overlays and stuff like that. If I do that in one sitting, my brain is in edit mode. So I can do a lot more in one sitting on multiple videos than if I try and come up with an idea, try and shoot it, try and edit it. You can understand how being in that different mind space really kind of mixes things up. We're going to blast through some of these myths and then we're going to wrap this video up because I got to go back to breakfast with champions and we're going to do an open Q&A. So anybody that's been watching this video or is on the app, if you scroll to the top, come to the YouTube video. This is the place that we're going to go through the comments and then the Breakfast with Champions are going to get the exclusive content and have the you know Q open Q&A and we're going to really discuss this topic in depth. So if you're on YouTube and you've never been on Clubhouse, head over to Clubhouse, find the Breakfast with Champions Club. If you are on Breakfast with Champions and you're on YouTube, please go in the comments and tell these people on YouTube what they're missing on the social audio app because Breakfast with Champions... I need to thank you for getting me to actually pump out these videos and we're going to grow together. So I'd love to bring my entire YouTube people over to Breakfast of Champions and vice versa because YouTube and social audio to me are the solutions for everything. So most common myths, video doesn't work. I heard this over and over and over. So when I was building my real estate business, I literally got mocked for doing videos on listings. People would come in and tell me, why would you spend money on a video for a listing? You know, you just price it really well and it's going to sell. I wanted to raise the bar in my industry. And I remember watching Million Dollar Listing. It wasn't actually Ryan. It was uh, Frederick Eklund. It was a home in Vail. And he did this video that made me feel like I was there and I wanted to buy the house. I literally took that video, sent it to my uh, photographer <coughs> and said, can you bring a video camera? I want to do this for 47 Virginia Ave in London, Ontario. Definitely not Vail, Colorado. But I looked at the video, looked at the intro, the body, the wrap up. And I started just doing the video that way. Now it's the standard. Literally, I had to create my own production company because people were calling my videographer saying, hey, I want to do Justin's videos. And I'm an open book. I'd let him do it. And he'd call me and say, hey, if they want to do this, like how do you feel about that? And we had open conversations about it because he's a really good friend. But I opened my production company because it became so prevalent that I want to stay ahead of the market. So video works. Same thing with social audio and short form content. Like people were laughing at people on TikTok a year ago dancing and doing what they're doing. Now they're chasing them because they're seeing the millions that are being made. Social audio. I am in it, one of the largest real estate groups in Canada on Facebook, 17,000 agents. And they openly mocked Clubhouse about a month ago saying, yeah, I heard it's dead. I heard social audio is dead. That next week, I picked up $15 million of inventory off one Clubhouse connection because he knew who I was through social audio and gave me 20 units to sell. So that's the power of doing content creation and it works. One more note, Ryan Serhan. So many of you in this space around Clubhouse know he's my mentor. Like I consider him and the whole Serhan crew family, Sydney, Kyle. Um, I had McPeak on yesterday, Jordan, like the whole crew, super inspirational to me. They're a big part of why we are where we are today. And we collaborate with them a lot. But a lot of people think a guy like Ryan just got to where he got because of the TV show. I would challenge you, Go look up all the stars on Million Dollar Listing, LA, Miami, New York, every single show and put them on a spreadsheet and go to their YouTube channels and put their subscriber count on a spreadsheet. There's maybe three of them who have actually attained anything of significance and Ryan is number one. And I watched him figure this out because I was working with him, but he was also doing an interview with Gary V. So if you go to Agent 2021, Gary gives him the blueprint. Why did Ryan do it when nobody else did? Because he just figured it out. He hired a videographer, Adrian, and started shooting content. And it wasn't great in the beginning, but they did so much of it that he got really good. And now he is the number one followed real estate brand on the planet, bigger than any other brand, any other multinational that's been around for a hundred plus years. He has more digital reach than any of them. Let that sink in. It's oversaturated. Well, Ryan's doing it. I can't do it. That is an absolute falsity. I could go into New York today and I can start shooting videos around New York neighborhoods and start getting clients because it's a wide open green space. People think, well, I'm not going to go on Clubhouse because there's no way I'm going to build an audience now because it was last January and February where everything popped off. I'm here consistently and I've still seen consistent growth because I'm here consistently. 
Instagram, YouTube, follower accounts don't matter anymore. Another little hack for you guys. Half of those people bought their followers, if not more. Whenever you see somebody with a very large follower account and you feel a certain way about it, what I like to tell people is stop counting other people's money. It has nothing to do with you. You don't know how they got there and you don't even know if they just bought the followers so that they could get that profile. The crazy thing is though, don't ever think about buying followers because what you'll see is as you get to the higher levels of content creation, the people at the highest levels can tell instantly those people who actually just purchased their followers. Also, they get stuck in growth, right? I've seen people, you know, buy their 10,000 or their 50,000 followers, you know, three years ago and I was at a certain space and now I've blown by certain people in certain areas and they're at the exact same spot because the algorithm just thinks, well, you know, their audience are bots in India. So that's who I'm going to serve their content to. And they just don't grow anymore. So two things there is it is definitely not oversaturated. I told you I would show you how terrible I was on camera earlier. So this is the closers daily. So my daily series is now called Prime Daily. Um, it's the series I do on Instagram and I give people insights on real estate, media and productivity. Um, I had no idea what I was doing here. Here I'm standing on a beach in Grand Bend with my bike. So this is my little beach town. Here I'm standing in a forest looking very confused. There's a whole bunch of images here with text overlay on my face. Not very good on camera. And this was 100 videos in. So you can imagine what how bad I was when I was there at the very, very beginning. This is me now. It looks super slick. Be like a little bouquet Christmas tree in the back. But I didn't really think about the cover of this one. So it looks like I'm passing out. Again, I'm not perfect by any means, but I press record. And again, I'm a thousand plus episodes into all of what I'm doing now. So the only way you get better on camera is by actually pressing record and shooting. Other people will make fun of you. I'm the most self-deprecating guy you'll find out there. I take the M&M approach. If I make fun of myself, there's nothing you can do to me, right? And stop taking yourself so seriously. I think people like to pretend they're something that they're not. Um, we are going more to a world where people want to work with authentic people. My commercial division at my brokerage is taking mandates from some of the largest commercial brokerages on the planet because I'm an authentic human being. And the people that are coming to work with me have said specifically they don't want to work with the old school industry. They want to work with somebody that you know they can be belly to belly with and feel like they can hang out with as much as they can work with. And the reality of business at a high level is when you get to those spots with relationships that you're doing multiple transactions with, their friends as much as their business partners, you end up talking about everything but the deal for like 90% of it. And then for 10% of it, they're like, yeah, is this a good deal? Should I sign? Okay, awesome. And they don't even look at the paperwork. That's the reality of the relationships I've built. I'm not technical. I can't use cameras. I can't shoot. I can't edit. I can't post. Well, let's go back to Glenda Baker. This is the girl I was talking about earlier when I spoke to Rocky. Glenda Baker is the queen of real estate on TikTok, you know, 42 million plus views. She's got 7.9 million likes, you know, half a million plus followers kills it. And she doesn't actually shoot any of it herself. She pays a creative to come in and do that. Here's a hack. If any of you have teenagers, you can just pay your kid to do it. If my daughter, my daughter's eight and she still uses my GoPro and we do little videos here, I'm actually training her. So as she gets older, if she wants a job, I'll pay her a salary to shoot video with me and do some extra content. So use what's around you and the people that are around you to handle the technical side if you can't do it yourself. If Glenda can do it, anybody else can too. And go follow her on TikTok. She is hilarious. And then tell her you know me. I can't keep up with the platforms. Another hack for you, pick two to start. We talked about it earlier, images, video, social audio, words. Pick the platforms that speak to you. Facebook, Instagram, probably the most typical ones that you're going to see. Um, LinkedIn, phenomenal for business dev. I'd say LinkedIn is like probably my number one right now. I know that sounds crazy. Actually, it's YouTube, then LinkedIn, um, then fa Facebook for paid strategy. Instagram has become my text messaging platform. So I use Instagram to curate relationships. And a lot of times I'll DM people instead of texting them because then we're in each other's feeds and I can interact with them beyond a text message. So there's another little hack for you. You should only post houses, professional things. So if you're in the real estate space and you're creating content, a lot of times people just look at the top agents in their market um, and think, well, they're just posting just solds, just solds. Look how successful they are. The only people that care about that stuff is other agents who want to feel bad about themselves. Consumers that actually convert find people like Agent Kate. So Kate Broddick's a friend of mine. She is a fashionista. She has a series called Kate's Closet. People come to her by the thousands for fashion tips. She's a killer in real estate and they realize that by proximity, but find out what that 
additional thing that you are known for that you can anchor your content with. Me, it's real estate, media, and productivity hacks. So you come to me for media and productivity hacks. I guarantee you the next time you need a real estate agent, I'm going to pop in your head. I have agents across the planet, Israel, Florida, LA, UK, all across Canada. If you need an agent, call me. I have the best referral network on the planet. So there you go. I just integrated content creation with my actual job. Another myth, I should separate my business and my personal profile. I'll use Ryan again as an, as an example because he's really good at this. His personal profile incorporates his kind of and and his business, but his brokerage is similar to mine. So my brokerage serves the purposes of the entire team. It's a platform that they get to use that amplifies their voice. My personal brand is separate. So I'm not taking my own advice here. I did separate my business and my personal, but what I would ask the audience is, Ask yourself the question, is it necessary for you at this point? Do you need to separate the two? Because if you don't, I would say it's more powerful not to. You're too private of a person to share anything. Go in my content. You will not find a photo of my daughter anywhere in anything. My wife is a genius. She's the CEO of Prime. She's smart as a whip, MBA from Ivy. She does nothing on social. No Instagram account, no Clubhouse account, no anything, right? She doesn't share anything. I'm the face of the company but you still don't see a lot of aspects of my life. I don't share publicly a lot of what we do from an investment strategy perspective for certain specific reasons. You can pick what you share and what you don't share. Maybe I'm a person that incorporates kids into my life. Chelsea Pites, another really good friend of mine. Her kid's adorable. I would hire him tomorrow. It's very organic. It's, it's part of who she is. It makes sense for her to share that. Again, I'm, more, I'm the most private public person you'll ever meet. So I've just made delineations around what I'm willing to share and what I'm not. So put in the work and do that. And I don't have time. You're a liar. Um, I like putting this image because I always laugh when I see it. You do have time. You have actions and you have ambitions. If your ambitions are to do this and you're not putting in the actions, well, you review your calendar and you either got to look at your actions or look at your ambitions and change one of the two. You don't have time because you're not making time. I just gave you the blueprint. One day for ideas, one day for shooting, one day for editing, for distribution. Even half an hour time blocks for all three of those should get you started. And this is the daily planner sheet that I use to plan everything on a weekly perspective. So I'm going to drop these slides into the mailing list. So if you go to justinconico.com slash resources, I'll send this entire replay. I'll send this slide deck and actually this daily planner sheet that you see. I'll be sending out as well. Um, I did a segment privately on Breakfast with Champions three weeks ago going through my perfect day. And this is what we created from that as well. I would also tell you to go check out Breakfast with Champions Morning 5 Planner. I actually have it right here. This is a great way to kind of go through and start your day. And literally, I check off the boxes of when I wake up in the day, not pressing the snooze button, not touching my phone, so on and so forth. I just wanted to add that as a little bonus. Appreciate you all being here on the live stream. I'm going to take this back to Clubhouse. We're going to do about 10 minutes of Q&A, and I will catch you on the next one. So I'm going to end broadcast now. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you one more really cool thing that you can do at StreamYard. So if I go back up to the comments, I'll see people like my boy Armando, and I'm going to see people like Valerie, and I'm going to pull this off the screen. And there's my girl social with Rocky. Thank you for being here, nurse practitioner. What makes me smile is you know, people like Patricia Rooster and Janice and Amanda Dahl. These are all people that are live on Clubhouse right now. So I told you that you know this is one of the most interactive platforms on the planet. It truly is, but you got to come hang out with us there. Thanks for being here on YouTube and back to Clubhouse.